right friends welcome back to second part of this question and answer session the first question of this week is name the director of uh, indian cricket team all of you are well aware it is uh, ravi shastri who is the coach of indian cricket team it is uh, duncan fletcher please don't forget these two names look at the second question union government has recently kept in abeyance the decision to raise the size of the pictorial warnings on cigarettes or bds from 40% to the answer is 85% i would like to explain you a bit about this government of india took a decision some time back to increase the size of pictorial warnings on the cigarette pack if you look at the cigarette pack the pictorial warning that means depicting the picture i am talking about words is different picture is different so the pictorial warning previously covers 40% of the space of cigarette pack or bd packs 40% now government wants to raise it to 85% it is supposed to be implemented from 1st april but for the reasons unknown government has not implemented and subsequently government came in for a lot of criticism when one of the bjp mps who is also the chairman on the committee on subordinate legislation looking into this issue stated that there was no link between tobacco and cancer it created lot of controversy when bjp mp dilip gandhi from maharashtra stated that there is no link between tobacco and cancer subsequently several organizations criticized the statement of bjp mp whatever the controversy finally raising the pictorial warnings to 85% which is supposed to be implemented from 1st april could not be implemented right look into the next as per the report of amnesty international A report of the amnesty international indian courts pronounced dash death sentences in 2014 amnesty international is the human rights organization based in london based in london human rights organization established in the year 1961 and it looks into human rights violations it looks into human rights violations as per the amnesty international report last year 64 persons 64 persons were pronounced death penalty as per the amnesty international report i would like to tell you two points at present in india 270 persons are facing death penalty 270 persons are facing death penalty and in the world four countries contribute to 3/4 of the executions execution is nothing but implementing the death penalty death penalty capital punishment execution please try to understand these words one is the death penalty that means it will lead to execution of life death penalty and capital punishment are one and the same execution means the implementation of death penalty and four countries in the world china iran iraq and saudi arabia together constitute 3/4 of the total executions look into the next one name the place where five inmates accused of serious criminal offenses were escaped from central jail in maharashtra that is nagpur in vidarbha region from nagpur central jail five inmates accused of serious criminal offenses were escaped government is probing into this issue look into the next one name the state where the controversial control of terrorism and organized crime bill 2015 was passed by state assembly recently it led to lot of debate 
Control of Terrorism and Organized Crime Bill 2015. As per this bill, I would like to tell you, police can tap your conversations. Second thing is, they can take you into custody and can keep in their custody up to 30 days. Third thing is, they can file charge sheet even up to 180 days. So, these three things are part of this bill which was passed by Gujarat State Assembly recently. Right friends? Name the state government which passed a bill that seeks to provide primary education from standard 1 to 5 in the child's mother tongue. Recently, Karnataka Assembly passed a bill making mandatory the education up to class 5 in mother tongue. The answer here is Karnataka. Look into the next one. Name the country whose president has signed a draft nationwide ceasefire agreement with armed ethnic rebel groups. Myanmar is the country where there are several armed ethnic conflicts. There are several ethnic groups in the country fighting for their own autonomy. And recently, this Myanmar government signed a ceasefire agreement with the 16 ethnic groups. With the 16 major ethnic groups, what is ceasefire agreement? Ceasefire agreement is nothing but stopping of use of firing. That means arms should be let down. There is no firing either from government side or from the rebel side. So, recently that agreement was signed by Myanmar government. Let us hope it may lead to peace and stability in the region in future. Next question, name the state government which started the field trials of GM crops of rice, corn, chickpea and cotton. We have already learned in the previous classes. Maharashtra government started field trials of GM crops. What is GM crop? GM crop is nothing but a genetically modified crop. There are pros and cons of that. Some countries are for it. Some countries are against it. Because some countries feel that it may lead to genetic mutation in the human beings also. But some countries say they are perfectly safe. Under these circumstances, in our country, Maharashtra state recently undertook trials of GM crops for rice, corn, chickpea and cotton. The answer here is Maharashtra government. Look into the next question. Name the country which has lifted martial law completely. What is martial law? Martial law means Military rules will prevail over civil rules. Military rules will prevail over the general rules. That means, if martial law is imposed, your freedom of expression, your freedoms will be curtailed and martial law means military rule or military laws will ultimately prevail. Recently, Thailand government lifted martial law. Next. Palestina has joined the ICC recently. What is ICC? ICC is International Criminal Court. The headquarters of ICC is in The Hague City in Netherlands in Europe. International Criminal Court is headquartered in The Hague in Netherlands. What is the purpose of International Criminal Court? International Criminal Court is basically the trial of cases pertaining to genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity as a whole. Genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity as a whole. That means, during war times, if some excesses are committed by army or one particular sect is totally terminated, that means extinction of one particular tribe or one particular ethnic group, 
for these type of issues international criminal court will come into picture recently palestina has joined international criminal court international criminal court is headquartered in the hague in netherlands in europe and palestina joining international criminal court is not palatable for israel right look into the next one dash government stated that it regained the control of tikrit from isis we all very well know isis islamic state of iraq and syria at present controlling almost one third of iraq and one third of syria and recently iraqi government claimed that they regained the control of tikrit the town from isis the answer here is iraq right friends next one recently a tower of worth 1.4 billion dollars 1.4 billion dollars is roughly rupees 9000 crores of rupees recently a tower of worth 1.4 billion dollars was inaugurated and will be the new headquarters of european central bank in frankfurt look at this iconic building recently it was inaugurated the cost of this building is 9000 crore rupees 1.4 billion dollars and several countries in europe protested against this exorbitant expenditure because several countries in europe at present are under recession and european central bank while giving loans or while helping the countries puts a serious austerity measures to reduce their expenditure that means ecb tells the countries to reduce expenditure but it created a monumental structure of 9000 crore rupees or 1.4 billion dollars for its headquarters so several groups protested right friends look at the next one name the state which launched 24/7 helpline with number 1031 to tackle graft in delhi if someone is asking for a bribe please ring up 1031 1031 recently launched by the chief minister of delhi arvind kejriwal and if someone is asking for a bribe you can ring up 1031 if you are a resident of delhi please look into the next one dash is the first steel plant in india that claim to have achieved annual production of 10 million tons of crude steel the first steel factory in the country that is tata steel in jamshedpur achieved this milestone of producing 10 million tons of crude steel please don't forget this tata steel or tisco plant previously known as was started by Dorabji Tata in the year 1907 at present it reached a capacity of 10 million tons of production please remember in india all the mills put together the production capacity reached 100 million tons this is one milestone for the country in india the steel production capacity at present is 100 million tons it surpassed america's capacity america has got around 90 million tons of capacity and india at present has 100 million tons of production capacity and please look into china which has got a capacity of around 1100 million tons that means 11 times our capacity so it may be a distant dream to reach china as far as steel production is concerned look into the next one prime minister has recently dedicated to the nation a modernized steel plant which raised its capacity from 2 million ton to 4.5 million tons the capacity of raurkela steel plant recently raised from 2 million tons per annum to 4.5 million tons per annum with a total cost of the project 12000 crore rupees and recently prime minister inaugurated it at raurkela steel plant and please remember 
Sale Steel Authority of India Limited has got five steel plants, and there is a massive plan to raise the capacity from 13 million tons to 23 million tons at a cost of rupees 72,000 crore rupees. Please don't forget this, right? Enforcement Directorate has recently attached. Rupees seven forty to crore worth of properties of former Telecom Minister Dayanidhi Maran and his brother Kalanidhi Maran and their family members. Recently, Enforcement Directorate attached around seven forty to crores of property. Dayanidhi Maran and Kalanidhi Maran and their family members in connection with. The answer here is Aircel Max Steel. We have discussed this issue in the previous lecture. In the Aircel Max Steel, Aircel was pressurized to sell its 74% share to Maxis of Malaysia, and Maxis in turn invested 742 crores in Sun Group when Mr. Dayanidhi Maran was the Telecom Minister. This is all about Maxis Aircel Max Steel. Look into the next one. For interest subvention scheme of exports, the allocation in 2015-16 budget is the answer here is 1625 crores, rupees 1625 crores. Have you understood what is interest subvention scheme? Have, do you know about the base rate? Base rate is the rate below which they cannot give loans to customers except some exempted category. base rate is the rate below which banks cannot give loans but for exports for agriculture they give loans below base rate agriculture loan stands at 7% loans to self help groups may stand at 4% but this gap below base rate is paid by government to banks when the base rate is 10% when farmers are getting at 7% the gap is paid by government of india that is called interest subvention for exports also to facilitate exports there will be interest exemption below base rate and that is to be paid by central government for that in the budget rupees 1625 crores is kept this year please don't forget Next one, PepsiCo, multinational giant, where Indra Nooyi is the CEO, recently commissioned phase one of its 1200 crore plant in Sri City SCZ. This Sri City SCZ is situated in Andhra Pradesh. Recently, Indra Nooyi came to India, and along with Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister, she inaugurated this plant in Sri City in. Chitur district of Andhra Pradesh. Look into the next one. To implement Food Security Act 2013, Government of India has recently extended the deadline by another six months. The answer here is six months. Food Security Act was brought in the year 2013. The act primarily aims at providing subsidized food grains. Like rice, wheat, and other coarse cereals, at rupees three, rupees two, and rupees one per kg, and out of total twenty-nine states and seven union territories, that means out of total thirty-six, only eleven implemented till date, and remaining states are union territories are yet to implement this scheme. And government of India recently gave six months more time. to implement the food security act friends a tripartite agreement was signed between central government state government and ntc what is ntc ntc is a national textile corporation limited to construct a memorial for baba saheb ambedkar in indu mill land in central mumbai in central mumbai indu mill land is there that land belongs to national textile corporation 
now a memorial is proposed to be built for baba saheb ambedkar a tripartite agreement was reached between government of india maharashtra government and national textile corporation limited to build a memorial for baba saheb ambedkar in indu mill land in central mumbai look into the next one in the miami open tournament this miami open it is conducted every year miami is in florida this is a tennis tournament recently serena williams won the title for the eighth time this miami open tournament serena williams won the title for eighth time serena williams also belongs to united states of america so she won for eighth time this title look into the next one name the ceo of alibaba alibaba is probably world's number one e-commerce company he raised the largest ipo last year he met the prime minister recently the name of ceo of alibaba is jack ma right friends look at the next one the platform ticket from april 1 in indian railways costs rupees 10 it was increased from rupees 5 to rupees 10 two things don't forget the advanced reservation facility is now increased from 60 days to 120 days and the platform ticket now costs rupees 10 instead of 5 look into the next question as per the sebi's new regulations securities and exchange board of india's new regulations city corporations can tap the public markets with bond issues these are popularly known as muni bonds or municipal bonds that means city corporations like chennai kolkata lucknow they can issue bonds by issuing bonds they can tap public money so that that money can be used for developmental works in their corporation this is prevalent in several western countries but in india recently sebi gave permission sebi gave new regulations some of the indian corporations are also tapping this route previously but it was not that successful now sebi gave new regulations with regard to this muni bonds that means issue bonds collect money from public develop the city that is the concept which is prevalent in western countries right look into the next one in 2015 16 budget the petroleum subsidy is kept at rupees 30000 crore rupees i would like to tell you a bit about this there are four petroleum products normally we use one is diesel there is no subsidy second one is petrol there is no subsidy you have to pay the market price third one is lpg there is subsidy we are getting 12 subsidized cylinders per annum fourth one is there is subsidy on kerosene and in the union budget 22000 crores was kept for lpg subsidy and 8000 crores was kept for kerosene subsidy making it a total of rupees 30000 crore right friends look at the next question name the bank which issued the five year green bonds for 500 million dollars what is green bond bond is nothing but issue a bond and collect money from the public or from institutions by issuing a bond you collect money and green bond means you use that money for environmental friendly projects or clean energy projects like wind power like solar power you use that money for funding those projects that is known as a green bond collect money from public use it for environmental friendly projects that is called green bond and recently exim bank issued five year green bonds for 500 million dollars 500 million dollars is roughly rupees 3000 crores look into the next one in the union budget 2015-16 the total allotment for various subsidies the government's main emphasis 
is reducing subsidy last year the total subsidies were around rupees 2.63 lakh crores 2 lakh 63000 crores this year they are kept as 2 lakh 43000 crores or 2.43 lakh crores that means there is a reduction of around 8% in the subsidy bill due to the reduction in petroleum prices not only that government wants to ensure some reduction in other subsidies like fertilizers and food right friends please remember this year the total subsidy bill as per the budget is rupees 2.43 lakh crores next one target set by the union government for agricultural loans as per 2015-16 budget is rupees 8.5 lakh crores last year the budget allocation for agricultural loans was rupees 8 lakh crores it is now increased to rupees 8.5 lakh crores for agriculture sector look into the next one which of the following is not a refinance organization what is meant by refinance organization refinance organization is they finance banks or financial institutions ultimately they will give to the common man if you look at nabard nabard normally finances rural banks cooperative banks subsequently we will get loan from rural banks and cooperative banks that means when an institution is giving loan to some organization which in turn they will pass on the benefit to the common man that is known as refinance organization here nabard is refinance organization primarily for agriculture and rural development sidbi is for msmes mudra bank of course the details are had to be known mudra bank is also for small enterprises micro and small enterprises but spi is not a refinance organization because spi directly gives the loans to customers and other corporates but nabard sidbi mudra bank they are basically into refinance activities please don't forget the external commercial borrowing of indian corporate sector doubled during the last 5 years and at present stands at 120 billion dollars the answer here is 120 billion dollars what is external commercial borrowing external commercial borrowing is nothing but indian corporates indian industries indian corporate sector taking loans abroad why these corporates take loans abroad because the interest rates there are very less in comparison to indian interest rates that's why corporates tap the funds from abroad because their funds are available at low interest rates that is known as external commercial borrowing the external commercial borrowing of indian corporate sector doubled during the last 5 years and at present stands at 120 billion dollars and please remember this is the highest among all types of external debt of the country this is the highest among all types of external debt for the country that is external commercial borrowing look at the next one india is the world's largest recipient of remittances in 2014 what is remittances your brother is working in united states of america as a software engineer definitely he will send money to you sending money from abroad to india is basically foreign remittances several indian citizens are working in gulf countries working in united states of america they send money back to their parents maybe to their sister maybe to their brother that is known as foreign remittances india is the highest as far as these foreign remittances are concerned in the year 2014 india got 
71 billion dollars of foreign remittances the answer here is 71 billion dollars look at the last question of the week name the strait which is situated between amman and djibouti why i asked this question is several persons from amman were evacuated recently from djibouti djibouti is the port in africa yemen is that side djibouti is this side the shallow waters linking to big oceans or seas is known as strait here the strait between yemen and djibouti is bab el mandeb bab el mandeb this strait connects red sea with arabian ocean the second one is strait of hormuz connects persian gulf with arabian ocean the third one is the strait of malacca which connects indian ocean with the pacific ocean these the three straits along with the suez canal and panama canal contributes to maximum amount of traffic through the seas right please don't forget the first one is this bab el mandeb this connects red sea with arabian sea second one is strait of hormuz connects persian gulf with arabian sea third one is strait of malacca which connects indian ocean with pacific ocean right let us wind up this week's question and answers have a nice day thank you